Hey, what's up? It's Sifu Cuddle, and in this Kung Fu combo, we're going to be working with the crane strikes. So Kung Fu crane is usually considered an advanced level technique because we're using our fingertips, because we're using the, the wrist itself. These are areas that if you don't have good control and you don't have good accuracy, you could end up hurting yourself. So there's things that you can do like condition the fingertips, condition the wrists, work on your flexibility, but also you really have to put a big emphasis on accuracy. Accuracy comes through repeated repetition and specific drills and pad striking to really learn how to hit where you want to hit, when you want to hit from any position. Okay, so it takes a lot of repetition in that. Um, in this technique too, we are going to be doing one of the signature techniques that you see in pretty much any martial art that has any kind of a crane reference, and that is the one-legged crane raising position. Sometimes we do it with two crane beaks, like you've seen in the Karate Kid, and when anybody does an impression of karate or crane kung fu, they do that. But in this particular technique, we're going to be doing a single-legged crane lift with a single crane head. Um, other than that, we are going to be using our elbows. So again, focus on that pinpoint accuracy. Think of striking towards soft spots like the eyes, behind the ear, the temple, and the throat, and have fun with it. All right, so we're going to be using our hands exclusively in the crane beak position. So thumbs in, fingertips in, make those crane beaks, and we'll keep the wrist bent unless we're going in for our straightforward poke. First thing we're going to start with is a cat stance, and then I'm going to extend one, two crane beaks, aiming for the eyes or the throat. So we're going to hit, hit, and then from here, I'm going to roll, raise to our classic crane beak position. Crane balancing on one leg, okay? Sometimes you do two. In this case, we're going to just do a single. Now, as you raise up, try not to tilt back to do this. You want to think of extending the body straight up and down, and then think of a string attached from your fingertips to your elbow, to your knee, to your toes. So it all comes up together here, okay? So again, we start with our cat stance, poke, poke, roll, raise. Now from here, I'm going to step out and block. So I'm going to step, block, come across, and then I'm going to do an elbow strike, okay? So cat stance, one, two, roll, lift, come over, and then elbow strike forward and back pinpoint with that, just like how our crane beak pinpoints. Again, facing this way, one, two, roll up, out, elbows. If I'm facing this way, poke, poke, roll up, out, elbows. Okay, so there you go. Now, like I mentioned in the beginning, this is something where it's uh, considered an advanced level technique because it's not that easy to pull off especially once somebody is trying to attack and hit you. So you have to use these techniques at the right time. It's all down to context. You have to be able to pick the time to use the crane beak and know that it will address the situation, or if it's gonna make your opponent more aggressive and angry and come back at you, that's not the right decision. That's not the most responsible way of using this technique. You can choose to use a fist, you can choose to use a palm strike, you can choose to use some other technique to get out of it, but that's a, really sign, that's a sign of really uh, an advanced level practitioner is to know when to use particular techniques. Now the other thing is, just because this may not be the best option in a particular situation doesn't mean we can throw it out completely. So uh, for perfect example is we wouldn't see this in ring sports or combat sports or MMA because you have gloves on and because you can get the job done with a good closed fist. So when it comes down to uh, this technique in general too, you don't have to throw it away completely either because we can look at how we can adapt it to gloves, to using uh, straight punches and things like that. So you can always work our very first technique. We had the two crane beak. That's your regular one, two. You don't need to do a one-legged raise with the, with the glove. That is a balance position that's made for training. That's so that our body can get better balance and alignment and control. It's more than just the combat training in that section. But learning how to bring over control and then throw an elbow can be definitely applied uh, almost directly without much change in the hand position to combat sports. Now these are things that we would go over if you were my student, whether in private lessons or in group classes. We would do the technique, we would go over application, conditioning, and then learn how to develop and apply it in more of a contextual way into more freestyle 
uh, training like drills and sparring. So you would have a nice way of building that progression there. And uh, unfortunately, that's not something that we can do. That's why you're watching this online. But hopefully, this can inspire you to work this into your own training. And hopefully, you're at a place where um, you have your training at a school or you're working with uh, friends that you can actually take your time and learn how to apply these correctly and safely. Okay, so if you have any questions, drop a comment down below. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next time. Next. Bye.